Alright guys, Ivan here. I'm here to talk to you guys about how to stretch. And everyone has his or her own way of stretching because it might be tense in areas that others aren't. And today, for example, Greg's pretty he's pretty uh, stiff right now, so I'm gonna show him some stretches that will help get him loose and groovy and feeling like a noodle. And what I like to go about it is I start off with the foam roller. And the foam roller does so many beneficial things for the body. It's basically a deep tissue massage for all your muscles and ligaments and you let gravity do its thing. So, one thing you start off is basically start off with the back, right? Make sure you're over at center. And sometimes you might have to tuck your shirt in because it'll get caught underneath. Just like that. So make sure you're wearing some fitted clothing. Just tuck your shirt in. <laughs> the thing with this, it helps you understand with distribution of weight. So if you're right here, in your lower back, it might be hard for me to talk and then start shivering and shaking. And basically I'm working and engaging my core. So when you extend your hands out, you're using more core. You're distributing your weight in areas that are really difficult. So it looks funny, but it really, it is very beneficial. You start off with the calves. And I've showed this in previous videos, so I'll do it real quick. This is just to loose up all those muscles that may be tense. If, especially if you've been battling off of an obstacle or something or you've been skating for a while and haven't been landing much and falling. So before I go out and skate, this is what I usually do. This is my daily routine. So I'm roll it out. Once you're done doing all that, you know, you can experiment doing different methods. This is good for your glute. Do that at different angles. And this is good for me because a brief recap on the last trip we went on in LA. We were skating with the Haw Brothers and I was doing a boneless over a fence off the C train and I landed straight on my hip bone. So this exercise right here, if you ever land on your butt cheek or your hip bone, this is a great stretch or a technique that will massage that tense hip flexor. After that, I like to do some warm ups and this is a warm up they do in Chinese Chinese boxing. So, check this out. You know how people start off with jump ropes, right? If you had a jump rope, you can warm up before a spot. In Chinese boxing, they have a similar method, and it's good for quick reflexes in your muscles. So, this is what you do. So, go one foot out, opposite, 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 opposite. Right? And we do it subconsciously, but when we walk, notice how we do opposites, right? Left foot, right foot is counterbalancing body. It, your mind subconsciously does it and it just, you do it on your own without even thinking about it. So with the Chinese boxing warm up method, same thing, like jump rope. If you don't have, it's good for quick thinking and muscle reflex. Loosen up, right? Shake it out. Sometimes it may be difficult to shake your wrist or hands like that if you've been falling on your wrist a lot. 
That's why they do these exercises of rotating the wrist. And you know, the more you practice in doing rotations with your wrist and your feet, like the doctors say when you roll your ankle, they tell you to do your A, B, and C's, right? It's because they want you to strengthen the muscles around the ankle that'll help get a fluid movement. So, think of like an analog stick to a controller. Notice if you were doing a rotation with the analog stick, check how fluid that is. Boom, right? In skate one, you want to do a tray flip, bam, right? Verizon sign, laser flip, other way. And then with the nollie flip, it's the same thing with your wrist and your feet. And the more you do those rotations and practice on those, you will be more fluid and consciously and uh, making synapses to the parts of your body that may be affected due to an injury. So if you find out, let's say, it is difficult to move in this direction or do a smooth rotation, you know that you need to work on it. So the exercise I do right now as of this moment, is, like I said, because I hit, I messed up my hip from that big drop. So I'm gonna do some exercises for my hips. How do you think I'm gonna do that? Rotations, right? I know it looks weird, but I do this at home. And if you were looking at the top of my head, and imagine looking at me from a top view, and you think of my hip, if you could see through me and I was transparent, you would see that the hip is no different like an analog stick. So I'm just gonna do the rotation, right? And make sure my head is above my pelvis straight up center and the midline so you got to practice those doing those right and when I was talking about how your body subconsciously does things with opposites when you're walking the same thing it should be when you're moving your spine or your arms or your feet so this is gonna look weird as well, but in Shaolin Kung Fu, they do this lunge, a forward lunge, but it helps with the back as well. So they do this, step back, do the lunge, and then they go back, forward, and then they go to the spine. And when you're pushing your chin back, and you're gonna feel it in your lower spine, you're gonna do this, push down, so you're, you're recoiling and you're condensing your spinal lumbar, and then go back. So it's like Tai Chi. Alright. Switch. And if you think, like I said, the, the analog stick analogy or reference, think of every limb moving in circular motions. The more you do your exercises in circular motions and rotating your hips a different way, just experiment, the more limber you will be and become the more you practice these exercises. So, you know, just, just experiment. Like I said, you think of the body and the limbs as like an analog stick. You want to be able to extend your body in ways that you should be able to, but if, if you're restricted in your obliques or your hips or your shoulders, well, you best believe that's gonna affect you in skating because let's say I'm trying to front side flip. And a few years ago, I had a hip problem on this side and I couldn't even lift my leg up. So that was hard to front side flip and do that, mo that movement so I'm gonna try to put in a perspective for you talking about looking at me from a top view so let's say this is my hips All right this is where my right hip is here's my left hip and here's my tailbone 
We're looking at it from a top point of view. So if I lift this leg up and I lift it up this way, right? Okay, my leg is good. My hip is good. If I kick this way, I should be able to. If I kick, do a side kick, I should be able to. But if I can't extend my leg fully this way, and I can't make that connection, then something's wrong. I could do it this way, okay, cool. So like I said, think of it like an analog stick, so let's demonstrate that. So think of it as a top point of view, and I'll stand in the center of this cross. All right. I'm gonna kick center. I can lift my leg, I'm gonna kick. All right, right there. Side, okay. Oh, little tens. Leg lifts. Back. Okay, I'll do on this side. All right, and it's the same thing with the analog stick. You practice more of going in a certain movement, it should be the same thing with shoulders, right? Circular movement, fluid. Now, with the front side flip and the back side flip like that, you have to start with your shoulders and then the, the feet do the rest. Now, doing these exercises to me is very beneficial for skateboarding and every other walk of life of your lifestyle. So. I hope you apply these methods and take that to heart. Apply it and I hope it works for you. Mowgli, he's been hurt and he's been asking for some help, advice and I, you know, I said what I could and the thing is, is it's really up to you to do these exercises. At home, you know, that's your own time and place and um, Really do your practice with sincerity. Don't cheat. If you don't do the work, then you're not gonna heal. And he messed up his knee, and I remember what it was like. I messed up my lateral, collateral ligament, which is on the outer leg. So I had to do exercises that strengthened my knee. So I did some circular movements. And the pool, swimming in a pool, it does so much for you because you're using almost every muscle in your body because of the resistance. So if you're injured, I would consider going into a pool and just swimming and punching and kicking in different ways or doing slow movements. That will help a lot. So take it to heart, man, and practice it. Do what you can and I hope this works. Comment below if it helped you and yeah leave some positive feedback from Hopi. Until next time, you guys